All right, let's just jump right in. If you've ever built a home lab, I'm willing to bet you've slammed right into this wall. You want real, persistent storage for your virtual machines, but man, it can feel like a maze. So today, we're gonna cut right through that, look at two super popular solutions, and talk about one critical mistake you absolutely have to avoid. You know, the goal seems so simple, doesn't it? All you wanna do is create your own little home lab version of an AWS EBS volume. You want a data disk that just lives on, even if you decide to totally nuke the virtual machine it was attached to. It's the absolute dream for any serious tinkerer. But as a lot of you have probably figured out the hard way, getting there is, well, it's complicated. So what is this dream exactly? Well, it's all about separating your VM's brain, the operating system, from all its precious data. The idea is you have this small, totally disposable OS disk, and then this big, beefy data disk that's basically immortal inside your lab. And this right here is where so many of us start. We see Ceph, specifically its Rados Block Devices, or RBDs, and we think, ah, perfect. I mean, it plugs right into Proxmox, and it promises to deliver exactly what we want, this powerful network-based storage for all our VMs. On paper, it looks like the pro-level solution we've been searching for. Now, what's so cool about this setup is the insane flexibility it offers. You could, say, install Debian on a tiny little block device, attach a massive Ceph RBD for all your data, and then, if you get that itch to try a new Linux distro, no sweat, you just delete the OS, spin up a new VM, and reconnect that exact same data disk. All your stuff is safe and sound. That, that is the dream. But to get to that dream, you have to tame the beast. And let's be crystal clear about this. Ceph is an absolute beast of a system. It's a full-blown enterprise-grade solution that many of us, armed with our spare PCs and a ton of optimism, try to wrestle into our home setups. And honestly, this community quote just nails it. It sums up the entire problem perfectly. Ceph isn't designed for some old desktop humming away in a closet. It has an appetite. It wants serious enterprise-level hardware, and it's built to be massive. This is kind of our first big red flag that maybe, just maybe, this isn't the right tool for us. So what actually happens when you try to run this monster in a tiny little cage like a single Proxmox node? Well, you're pretty much putting it on a very, very short leash. And it does not like that. It doesn't perform well. At all. Let's just break down why it struggles so much. Ceph is really designed for huge clusters. We're talking 10 or more nodes, all connected with redundant 10 gig networking and running on special purpose-built SSDs. So when you run it on a single machine with a regular consumer hard drive, you get literally none of its main benefits. You get zero data replication, zero failover protection. You're taking on all of the complexity for absolutely none of the reward. So here's the bottom line. Using Ceph in a tiny single node home lab is just complete overkill. It's this incredible, powerful tool that you're using for a job it was never, ever meant to do. Yeah, you can make it work, but you're not getting any of the magic that makes Ceph special, and you're just inviting a whole world of headaches. But hey, don't worry, because there is a much more practical hero for this story. So let's talk about TrueNAS, which, for most home labbers, is absolutely 100% the right tool for this particular job. And this chart just lays it all out, right? In your home lab, Ceph is super complex and needs crazy expensive hardware for benefits you probably won't even see. TrueNAS, on the other hand, is way simpler, it runs on minimal hardware, and its main benefit, which is rock-solid data integrity thanks to ZFS, is something you can actually use and appreciate from the second you set it up. The advantages are just so clear. TrueNAS can totally run on that old desktop you've got lying around. It uses the legendary ZFS file system for amazing data protection and super easy snapshots. You can set up RAID to protect yourself if a drive dies. And sharing that storage with Proxmox using standard stuff like NFS or ISC, it's incredibly simple. It's just a much, much better fit. Okay, now I need you to listen up for a second, because this is the single most important piece of advice in this entire explainer. I'm serious. It doesn't matter if you choose Ceph, TrueNAS, or anything else, you have to know this one crucial Proxmox rule. This is the detach before delete rule. Repeat it after me. Before you ever delete a virtual machine that has a data disk you want to keep, you must go into the VM's hardware settings, find that disk, and click detach. Only after that disk is detached can you safely delete the VM itself. Because if you don't, 
Proxmox is going to pop up a little box asking if you want to clean up unused disks. And if you click yes, it will see your precious important data disk as an orphan and just delete it permanently. Poof, gone. All that work, all that data just vanished into thin air. So please, I'm begging you, tattoo this rule on your brain. Always, always detach before you delete. So as we start to wrap this up, the lesson here becomes incredibly simple right? This isn't really about one technology being better than another. It's about choosing the right tool for the job you are actually trying to do. And I absolutely love this quote from the source material because it just captures the whole situation perfectly. Trying to force Ceph into a small home lab just for simple, persistent storage, it's exactly like bringing a rocket launcher to a pillow fight. It's the wrong scale, it's the wrong power level, and you're probably just going to make a huge unnecessary mess. So really, you just have to ask yourself one question. What's my goal here? If your goal is to learn enterprise-grade, massively scalable storage systems, maybe for your career or just because it's cool, then yeah, by all means, fire up Ceph and dive into the deep end. But if your goal is just to have reliable, no-fuss data storage for your Plex server and your VMs, just start with TrueNAS. And you know what? There is zero shame in making this mistake. The entire point of a home lab is for it to be a playground. It's the place where you get to break things, figure out why they broke, and then rebuild them even better. It's where all the theory crashes into messy, beautiful reality. So with this lesson learned, there's really only one question left, and it's the most exciting one of all. What are you gonna build? What are you gonna tinker with? And what are you going to inevitably break in your own lab next? Thanks for tuning in.